The game of chess came to Western Europe from India in approximately 900 CE, 900 Christian era, about 1100 years ago. On the chessboard, black squares and white squares, dark squares and light squares are of equal importance. Eleven hundred years ago, did chess influence the development of line space pitch notation? Lines and the spaces between the lines being of equal importance. Line space stave notation. The lines and the spaces between the lines convey pitch names. Let's begin with two lines and one space. Naming the lowest line, called the first line, gives names to the space and line above, going from A to G in the repeating music alphabet system. If I label line 1A, next space is B, next line is C. Or I could label line 1B, next space C, next line D. Or line 1 could be C, next space D, next line E. I can give the first line any of the seven letter names. D implies E, F, E implies F, G, F implies G, a, and finally, G implies A and B. Or I could name the highest line of two, called the second line, then go backwards, through the music alphabet as I go down to the space and the first line. So if I name the second line G, going backwards down implies F in the space, E on the first line. Just as I did earlier, that second line could be given any of seven names. It could be F implying E, D, Could be E implying D and C. D line implies C and B. Naming the second line C implies B and A. Naming the second line B implies A and G, and naming the second line A 
implies G and F. Really understanding our common five-line stave begins with drawing 13 horizontal parallel, same distance apart, lines. 13 lines, hopefully the same distance apart, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, double check, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. Label the uppermost line A and descend, go backwards through the musical alphabet in sets of four letters, A, G, F, E. Get to the next line, it's a D, C, B, A. Makes the next line G, F, E, D. The next line is C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, and the first line, E. The middle line, C. The second line above it, G. And the second line below it, F. Are the origins of our modern F, C, and G clefs. Clef comes from the Latin word clavis, means key. Not a piano key or a key signature, but a key like this. A key that unlocks the secrets of the staff. The secrets of the staff being the names of the lines and spaces. A single red line labeled F was one of the earliest developments in stave notation. Over time, the letter F evolved to this clef sign. In theory, this F line could represent any of the five lines on the common stave. Could represent the uppermost line, line five. Could be line four.
the middle line, line three, line two, lowest line one. The single line could be yellow. Over time, that yellow line named C, the letter C evolved to this version. Notice there are elaborations of the original letters. This line C could represent any of the five lines. The top line, line five, line four, line three, second line, first line, A single line <clears throat> could be green and labeled G. Over time, the letter G evolved to this clef sign. In my music manuscript, I draw a vertical line with the straight edge. Then freehand the letter G. I use a dot to indicate the line G when I'm treating the G clef as movable. This G line could represent any of the five stave lines. Line five. Line four, middle line, line three. Here's the version we see today. Second line, line two. Or the bottom line, first line. F, C, and G clefs with movable five line staves. <clears throat> 